And let's go back a little bit to uh, a place we are going to Scorpio sign. Chica, where everything is intense. I am Scorpio. There is transformation. Oh, there is not a very easy place to be. And uh, the industry of music and all this kind of stuff, there is a lot of uh, rajasic things going there. And um, if you want to share something that it was a kind of transformational experience for you, or it was a challenge that you had to cope with, uh, because probably it's quite stressful to go all over around traveling and uh, where was a kind of starting point where you had this insight I need to do a kind of transformation it has to be I'm not going to survive forever in this track sure, sure. well I'm a, I'm, I'm a Scorpio so I'm very intense I'm very emotional and I feel and that's a good thing I embrace my feelings and my emotions. However, when I decided that I need to move into wellness, that's when my transformation really started to happen. And I will say I'm very grateful for all the people I worked with, Beyonce and Pink and Lale and all, all people in the music industry. Whether it was intense or not, it taught me something and it made me stronger so that I can bring those experiences and, 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 and from that world into this world of wellness and be more balanced um, and share a, a good work ethic. Just because we work with healing and medicine doesn't mean we can be lazy. We have to have a routine, you know, we have to be consistent and we have to follow through. And um, that, that's my transformation, is to, to be up here and have it be intense, and then be able to balance things out. I have that strength, but I just bring it to the world in a different way. And because it's usually because we see people breaking and then going for a transformation. Right. And your transformation was just much more satisfying. Understanding that the path sometime will be old. Oh, this when I'm just like four years old, it's not going to be so easy. And before you break completely, you saw that you need to do this transformation Absolutely. and go for the wellness industry. Absolutely. Her yoga practice is really intense, but it's <laughs> great. It's great. If you someday are uh, in a place where she's going to give a yoga practice, I recommend a lot. And then we go for the next question. Now we go to uh, Sagittarius. Dan Horacio, you're saying about uh, work ethics, right? To be in the wellness industry and not being lazy and not being just like, oh, I'm just giving yoga class so I can get in the yoga studio the time I want and this kind of stuff. How is your experience traveling worldwide, contacting so much people, seeing so much experience about the work ethics of yoga, yoga teachers, uh, wellness uh, practitioners, what did you learn with a lot of people that you uh, said, oh, I'm going to do this way, oh, I'm not going to do this way. How was this process of becoming a wellness um, teacher sure. or practitioner? Sure. Um, I've, I've seen a lot. And, and living in America, the United States, where sometimes we take indigenous practices and we try to adopt them to our life and make it convenient for us, which means a lot of times we water down these ancient practices when we should keep the essence of the practice and not make it about, oh, yoga, I'm beautiful and I'm strong and I'm fit and I'm skinny and I wear beautiful yoga clothes. No, oh, it's about what's happening inside, what's happening with your heart, what's happening with your mind, what's happening with your emotions. So with healing arts and healing practices and healing sciences, it's important for us to have integrity 
we don't have to be perfect, but we should live at a higher standard and practice what we are teaching. Also, what I have found is people in healing arts think, oh, I have to be poor and I can't have money, I'm just going to give everything away. Or the opposite, we have to make this a business and we have to market things to draw people to us so we can make a lot of money. No, there needs to be a balance. You deserve to get paid for your work, okay? You it should, is you a very important message. We, this, Let's say it again, please, please. You deserve to get paid for your work. If you are in the healing arts and sciences, you deserve to be paid. If you have done your work and done your, done your studying and put the time in, you deserve to be paid. However, we don't need to have beer yoga where people come to drink beer while they're doing yoga as a way to draw people so that we can make money. We don't need to market healing arts for just people with blonde hair and blue eyes in America because a lot of these arts came from people of color, okay? A lot of these things are shamanic practices that come from people of color and we deserve to be included in this, okay? So find the balance in, in all It's not to things. have a Barbie yoga, right. but Barbies can come to you. Yeah, right, yeah. right. To finding that balance where we are not so stereotyped, stereotyped for one side or another. Right. See, everyone is evolving, Everybody being more conscious. Everyone needs this, so let's include everyone. But let's also remember where this came from. This is ancient practice and let's honor our ancestors. Thank you. And now we go for Capricorn, Makararashi, where your brand, your footprint is there. Where you say something and you say, this is my personal achievement. And I'm proud of it. I like this. I'm glad that I'm doing this stuff. Where you say, look, world, I came here and this is my footprint. Thank you for that. So please share what is your current project, your own BB McHugh project of wellness and music and yoga. What is coming here? Sure. Well, my brand, as we call them, is just me being authentically me. Me liking who I am and who I, how I show up in the world. And all these things that I love now, they organically formed into my brand. So under my brand, which is called vibrational medicine, everything is a vibration. So in my brand are four pillars. Music, the sound current, which brings healing. We have plant medicine or plant alchemy that's working with herbs and tinctures and nature and the elements and um, yeah, plant medicine, food even. Then we have empowerment. So I, I speak to different groups of people, I speak to women, I speak to people of color, I speak to the youth, I speak to whoever wants to listen to my story. That's called empowerment. And then we have yoga, which is movement. So those are my four pillars. It's all vibrational medicine. It's all vibrational medicine. So music, food, plants, uh, music, and speaking empowerment. Thanks, because we had some empowerment there going on. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks for bringing this again. So, we are almost there in Pisces. But before that, there is a bridge of Aquarius. Aquarius! And uh, Kumbarashi represents where we come to a world family where we go for a place that uh, everything has some humanity. We are just one global family. We are moving towards a place where we can go through color, through case, through whatever, and see the yoga of Mexico, yoga of Thailand, yoga of Brazil, yoga of the United States, yoga of India. 
how you experience this moment of your life coming with this vibrational therapy and integrating this in yoga festivals and all this yoga uh, happening that is going all over the world. How uh, is your experience coming to Paraty Yoga Festival? How are you feeling here with this Brazilian family? Please share a little bit about this uh, wholeness feeling of yoga people getting together, making some music and this stuff. Well, one thing I've experienced in traveling all the world and sharing yoga, I've been in Borneo, Malaysia, sharing yoga with Muslim people who have their heads covered, who have wow. never done yoga before, That's they're amazing. excited That's to come amazing. to yoga. So it's the same space, it's the same heart. I've been in Sweden teaching yoga to a different type of people that is different from me. And here in Brazil, everyone's beautiful, everyone's so loving and passionate and warm. So I share yoga to lots of different types of people, and we usually are able to create a, a, a place where there's no separation, because we're all, we all just want to be happy. However, I wish I could say that the truth of it was we're all one. That's not realistic right now. Maybe that's the goal. But there's a lot of separation in this world that we need to. A lot to. of prejudice. A lot of prejudice. A lot of identity theft. A lot of um, mind control uh, from people who have colonized our countries. So there is still separation and we can't ignore it just because we're spiritual people. We need to look at it and say, this isn't okay and find ways to talk about it and find ways to work with it and, and strengthen our communities. Not everybody's going to accept us because of maybe the color of our skin or maybe our hair or maybe our beliefs and our religion. So we can strengthen our communities and learn how to bond with people that we have things in common with while realizing that not everybody likes us. There is a lot of hate in the world. So we still need to engage yes. in the world because there is still a lot of political things. Yes. Even yoga practitioners, they are still political people. Yes. They are not, oh, I'm just only meditating right. and uh, <laughs> I don't need to talk about this because this is about the mundane world. I live in another right. uh, stratosphere. No, things touch you. Yes. And if you don't relate with it, you are going to maybe suffer some prejudice sure. and this kind of stuff. Great, Bibi. And uh, we go to the final question about Pisces, where everything dissolves. Nina Rash. So my question is, your spiritual practice, if you can share a little bit with people. Usually, usually how is your sadhana during your day? You start doing it at 4 a.m., you do it when you wake up, it depends when you're traveling. Because there's a lot of challenges to keep this spiritual practice. You already told us that this is the first commitment. Congratulations for that. And I hope that you're watching. Just listen to this because this is a very important lesson. How is your spiritual practice daily? Please share. Sure. My spiritual practice is truth. And my spiritual practice is love and self-care for myself first. So generally, I'm a, a morning person. I can't sleep past 7.30. So I wake up and I drink water. I hydrate my body, which has been dehydrated over the period of sleeping for six, seven, eight hours. I drink water and then I have different meditation practices based on what is needed for that time in my life. Sometimes it's to just sit in silence. Sometimes it's to drink tea in silence and just pay attention to things that are coming up, self-observation. And sometimes it's to have a, more of a visualization type of practice. But I always like to start my morning easing into the day in a silent way. And the rest of my day involves a lot of different things. You know, work, I have responsibilities, I own a home. 
um, I, I make a priority to go do yoga every day. I make it a priority. And if I make it a priority every day to do yoga, if I only do yoga five days a week, I think I'm really good. Sometimes I do yoga twice a day. So yoga is a priority. Eating good food is a priority. And everything else, I just have to, because my life is very busy, after those things that I've mentioned, I have to flow. Flow with the rhythm of my day and do my best to keep up and take care of the things that I need to take care of and spend time with my friends and spend time with my family. But more importantly for me and what I need, is to have quiet time. People aren't talking to me. People aren't asking things from me. I'm not working and on the computer, but to have just peace and quiet for myself so I know what it's like to be in my own vibration. This is a perfect answer for a Pisces, to have time and space for yourself. <laughs> perfect. So, we are just on the flow here. We have more five minutes so we can go so you can go to the stage and put the music there because it was a kind of um, blessing to have this time and space here to talk thank, thank you, you again uh, your uh, website and this kind of stuff we're going to put on the description okay. but please yes um, I'm very active and, and approachable on, on social media Instagram Facebook Twitter it's all BB McGill B I B I B B McGill M C G I L L Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Find me. Also, my website bbmcgill.com. Please come say hi and reach out to me. That's very easy, and we are going to put on the description. Okay. So now we have just like few five minutes for you to give your message. Sure, Please. sure. The floor is completely yours. Thank you. Um, probably. Oh. oh. We have it on private. <laughs> ah. All right, come in here. So, something that's very important to me right now is truth. And I think it's important for us all to realize that most of our lives, we have grown up being taught lies. Lies in school about where we come from and who our ancestors are and coming from the TV and the media. We're not told things to empower us as people, especially people of color. So the best thing I can say to you is be willing to forget everything you ever learned and start investigating the truth, your history, where you came from, so that you can better understand who you are now and where you're going. So, unlearn the lies, relearn the truth, to take the chains of enslavement off of your mind and to liberate yourself and be free. Thank you very much, Bibi. This is Umberto's message.